In this video, we'll cover how to control a servo with a button. If I press start simulation here, the result here is when I press the button, my servo starts from this position and goes to this position. So it goes to 180, and then when I release the button, it goes back to position zero. So let's start by going to our dashboard. Make sure you're in circuits, and then choose create new circuit. Retitle your project. I'm going to call this button and servo. And if I go to components here um, and I go to Arduino, I'm actually going to try to bring in a button uh, preset. So I click on the button preset and click again to my canvas to insert it in there. And uh, you can see that a button looks a little bit more complicated than one might think. Um, and so if I were to do this, if I go to uh, this drop down menu and I choose basic and then I try to bring in a servo motor, micro servo, my goal here is to control this with this button. The problem here is if I hover over this ground, I can simply click on this pin and bring it to one of the ground pins on my Arduino here or here. But then when I hover over this right here where it says power, um, I only, only have one pin for power, which is five volts. And that's the reason why um, you would use a breadboard. You would use a breadboard if you had more components that you wanted to incorporate into your circuit, but you didn't have enough pins for it. So we're actually going to do that right now. I'm going to delete this for now. And then I'm going to bring in a breadboard. So if I scroll up a little bit, I see one right here called breadboard small. I'll click on it once, and then I'll click again into the canvas. So before we get started here, uh, we should probably understand how a breadboard works. So right here, when I hover over this pin, anything that I plug into this pinhole right here is connected to all these other pins. So if I were to plug in another component or a series of components into any of these rows, all the those uh, things would be connected. Uh, similar to this one right here, if I could plug anything into here, anything I plug into here will be connected to any of the pins here and anything plugged into the pins here. Same thing with this row right here and this row right here. These do the exact same thing, but they're just oriented differently. These are oriented uh, by columns here, the way that we're looking at it. So anything I plugged it, that I plug into this pin right here will be connected to all these pinholes and to any component that are plugged that is plugged into any of these pins right here. So what we want to do here is um, we want to transfer um, what we see in the circuit onto our breadboard. And the reason why we want to do that is because uh, we want to utilize the breadboard for multiple components. And then uh, more importantly, when we actually get into the hardware, uh, we don't want our components just floating, right? We want them actually connected into an actual physical breadboard. So I'm going to try to replicate this. So I'm going to scroll um, up a little bit. I find that there's a push button right here. And then I'm going to insert it into my canvas, um, and more specifically, into my breadboard. And how this works is um, uh, this button right here, these pins are always connected right in this direction. And these pins are always connected in this direction. And then when I press on the button, they make a di diagonal connection this way. In this way so after this right here I have a resistor so I'll bring in my resistor and this resistor is if you follow this is going to go from here all the way to ground so I'll bring it in like this to like this you see and so actually there's a wire right here that you can see here you don't see a wire but they are connected because again this column is connected you can actually envision an imaginary wire behind this so this leg of the button is connected to this leg of the resistor because it's in the same column. And then when it goes from here to here, this now, this leg right here of the resistor is connected to this negative row, which is connected to nothing other than just these pinholes. So in order to ground this, I actually have to connect this one to this ground on my Arduino. So I can actually delete this because I know I just uh, installed it into my breadboard. And then I'll just actually connect this one to ground.
and I'll make that black because it's ground or negative. And so now this right here, this whole row is grounded because it's connected to this pin right here, which is connected to this pin right here, ground. And so now if I needed to add ground to my resistor and into this leg of my button, I did that just now. This is connected to this, this is connected to this whole row, and this whole row is connected to this pin, and this pin is connected to ground. So the next thing I need to do is give this leg of my button voltage. So what I could do is um, I'll delete this and then connect this 5 volts, not specifically to that leg, but rather to this pin right here. And then I'm going to immediately make that red. And by doing that, not only did I... Um, uh, power this one pin, but I powered this whole row. So now if I had, let's say, um, 10 components that needed power or 5 volts, I can plug it into any of these pins and they would all get 5 volts. So that's the benefit of, the benefit of using a breadboard. Instead of um, uh, banking on one pin for voltage, I now have a series of pins for voltage and a series of pins for ground. So I'm just going to continue um, connecting this right here to my 5 volts by simply going from here to here. So this again, this column is connected, so this is connected to this, and this is connected to this, and I'll make this red. And then finally, this right here, um, this top left corner, this pin right here, this leg of my button is connected to pin 2. So I can delete this now. And delete this now and all I have to do is take this and connect it to pin 2 so now that we have our button connected we can click on start simulation to test it so when I press this button I'm expecting the built-in LED to turn on Okay, good. So that's a good test to, to see if it's working. And for me, it is working. And so now what I'll do is I'll hit stop simulation and I'm gonna insert my servo. So I'm gonna scroll down a little bit here and I'm gonna insert micro servo. And um, in order to power this, I can go to my ground pin and I can bring it to one of these uh, pins down here. I'll make that black and then I can also do that for my power and I'll make this one red and then finally this one right here signal I just need to make sure I put it into one of these pins that has the ability to um, send an analog signal so I'll send it to pin 3 And then you can change these colors up here. I'll make this one uh, purple. And uh, we should be good to go here. So if I uh, press Start Simulation, uh, my results should do um, be the same here. When I press the button, the LED turns on. So the goal here is to make it so that when I press the button, it controls this servo. So I'm going to hit Stop. I'm going to click on code and um, we can take a look at what we have here. We have a uh, set button state to read digital pin 2. So the button is connected to pin 2. And again, that's going to be reading to see if the button is being pressed or not. If it's being pressed, then this should read high. When it's not being pressed, it should read low. So at this current state, it should be low. And so if this is true, if the button stays high, which is not, it's low right now, it'll do this. Because this is false, it'll do the else portion. So it's going to uh, set the built-in LED to low. Um, and then when I press the button here, um, when I start simulation, when I press the button here, it should turn on high, which it does. So um, right here, when I press the button, this button state is going to be high. And so this would be true if button state is equal to high. And that's why the built-in LED here turns on high. I'm actually going to delete this here and delete this and because we're trying to control a servo we're going to use this block right here 
rotate servo on pin blank to blank. And I'm going to put that here and one down here as well. So um, basically what I want to do is when I'm not pressing the button, I want these, this um, servo to be at zero degrees. And when I do press the button, I want this button to be the polar opposite, which is 180 degrees. And then I just have to set these um, pin numbers to wherever my servo is connected to. So my servo is connected to pin three. So I'll set this right here to pin three. And this one as well to pin three. And it's when I press the button, it's going to hopefully go to 180. And then when I release the button, hopefully it'll go back to uh, zero. So I'm gonna click on code right here and Hopefully it'll work, so I'll just hit start simulation. And then when I press the button here and hold it down, it goes to 180, and then when I release it, it goes back to zero. And that's how you use a button with a servo.